That's right. That's right. right. Exactly. Because <laughs> this is us. This is, this is us. The real us that you're getting here. We don't even know how to fake the funk. At all. Well, <laughs> it's not it's not even thing a thing. It's not even possible. No. So that's why y'all get us. You get us how you get us. <laughs> all our flaws and all. Yep. <laughs> y'all can love Beyonce with her flaws and all. Y'all can love us with our flaws and all. <laughs> oh goodness but I mean, here we are always as always like it doesn't stop it doesn't it doesn't stop can't stop won't stop <laughs> you know what i'm having deja vu i feel like i said that last time you did that really <laughs> <laughs> i did i think i did i think i got a problem <laughs> you can go up there because i started that and then you just get off of that I so I just, it's that natural thing that happens. That's what happens. We play off of each other. Woo woo. Right. <laughs> <laughs> mm. All right. So this episode doesn't have a number, right? Because this is just our third in our series. Yes, of killer astrology. Yeah. I mean, so technically it has a number. It's number three of our killer astrology. I was did, I almost did a four. We oh. Ready for four already, but no, number three. Because they wasn't supposed to count the pinky. That's all. You, just <laughs> <laughs> you had three fingers and a pinky. Right. <laughs> that, that doesn't count. Just, just, you don't see that. Yeah. Oh, wait and exhale, W. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> wait and exhale, crew. All right. <laughs> now we back to that. Well, I guess I'm not. I keep forgetting. I got to take myself off the market. <laughs> I'm not. Oh, never mind. <laughs> we gonna move on. We go. <laughs> oh goodness! Oh goodness! So, so what we got in store today, sis. What we got in store today? For killer astrology, we are doing Jeffrey Dahmer. Boom! Hey, I need sound effects, man. I need. A we do. Sound board up in here. Oh, what would we have done that time? Like maybe a horror film movie? <laughs> All right, so you say it and I'll go bum, bum, bum. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Oh. So we're like, welcome to our third edition of Killer Astrology. <laughs> And yes, I just used my Palo Santo as a microphone. Yes, she did. I'd be like, it'd be like that sometimes. <laughs> mini mics. You ever seen those? The little mini mics? The micro mics? I the had one. Mics. When we first started doing these recordings, I had my little miniature blue microphone. <laughs> I was holding it up. To go, watch our first, go watch our first episode. <laughs> Eventually, we realized that if I just set it down on the desk, you could still hear me. So I didn't hold it no more. <laughs> but I was holding it. <laughs> <laughs> Jam is truly outrageous. Oh <laughs> I did. I did. I did that it. Was so, oh my God. You just brought back memories. I did. I did. I used to rock with Jim. I really did. You couldn't tell me nothing. That was my show. Jim and She Bra. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Couldn't tell me nothing. Okay, 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 we got that plan. All right, gotta be serious. Gotta be serious now. Gotta be serious. All right, we're cleansing our area. Yeah. Got some heavy stuff to talk about. So everybody listening here, we were asked, you know, to remove all the bad juju. Got my evil eye on, making sure that we don't invite any bad vibes while we go and take a dive into the dark side. <laughs> <laughs> but while we 
gonna do that. Okay. <laughs> Boom! Look at that. Charge it to my chart. <laughs> you charging it to something over there. Right? So. <laughs> my bad. I was just trying to point out. Right. That, that her heart. That she was just getting it really close to her heart for you guys. <laughs> So I don't know if y'all can see it. You know, yeah. Card so much chart with the Leo symbol. It's so cute, sis. I love it. I love it on you. Yeah. You look adorable. Thank you. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. She's doing a thing for us. She's keeping yeah. us legit all the time. So, you know, those of y'all that want custom, because this is custom made. We're gonna right. have the regular one, you know what I'm saying, that that will be coming out soon. Right. But, well, we can get them. Good and inexpensive for y'all on wholesale. Right now, <laughs> it's not that. No. Right now, this hoe is gonna be making it on wholesale. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's I did it. I did it. I did that. <laughs> I, I did that. I'll be on that BS when we're on the BS. So <laughs> um, yeah, so we have some uh designs. Courtesy of sis Miss Monet Moo Goddess. She has made us some pretty things and we're gonna be rolling those out so you can see some of the pretty things. These ones will be a little more expensive because we are making them like one by one. Yeah. So um, but if you do want to be one of the first people to cop some stuff that has our stuff on the stuff, <laughs> then, <laughs> then hit us up. Um and we'll be putting that um out there. You know what I realized we never did? We never put out our book list on our page. We gotta make sure we go run. Maybe after this recording, you had three books and I had three books. Got to put the screenshots together. Just send me yours so I can put them in one post. Got it. Just swipe it. So that would be six books all in one post. Sounds like a plan. Sounds good. All right, boom. We took care of that. See how we be taking care of business right in front of y'all and everything. That's what we do. <laughs> this That's is fine. our therapy meeting. This is our business boardroom meeting. <laughs> this is our recording all in one. All in one. This all in one. That's why it says in the beginning of the description, raw and organic. For a reason. For a reason. Right, right, right. Because you can't, you can't censor us. We're not, we, we're no good. We really are. <laughs> you can't, you can't take us to, you can't take us to nice fancy places. We don't know how to act. Don't put me on speakerphone if you call me. Don't do it. No. I'm <laughs> same way i'm gonna say something and be like, oh, like oh, okay. <laughs> speaking of saying something grown and sexy we gotta talk about our event again real quick oh dog dog it okay sorry i'll be forgetting about boom i know i know don't forget stop it stop it it's important I know, but see, I'm just excited because I'm. I know, I know. Yes. Travel and. Yes. <laughs> we got our co-host booked. Yeah! She's excited. Consuela Green. I will be putting up her bio and information as well after this um, recording comes out. Y'all will be able to go to the page and see her. Yeah. Also, you will be able to see her payment links in case you want to support her causes. She is a doula and a midwife in training she's also um attending her nursing school right now um she is a very pro woman she's on her spiritual path she's hella funny um she also sells the grown-in sexy type stuff on the on the side side you know what i'm saying, you know what I'm saying? and <laughs> and she's going to be joining us for our event and giving us lots of laughs and uh, we'll be able to pick her brain about the stuff that she does and hear some things and and share in a safe space where we can talk about our feminine, womanly, sacral chakra issues. Yes. While we're laughing and joking and drawing or painting or coloring with a big giant crayon that you stole from the baby's school <laughs> supplies. I don't, I don't judge. We don't judge. It's going to be fun. So this time it's just going to be fun. Just come and relax, let your hair down with us, take your bra off. And, uh, you know, <laughs> you know, you know what you all ladies do. You know what you do. You will put your little. Also to the Zoom. In the description on Spotify, yes. on Apple Podcasts, on YouTube, yes. on all the platforms. Um, you will definitely find it. If you go to our Instagram, go to the link in our bio. It will be there, too, for the Zoom link. So it's, it, you can't miss it. You can't miss right. it. It's right. Yeah. So we're rolling out the Zoom link now because this is a completely free, free event. Again, if you'd like to support myself, 
and Miss Monet as twin sisters, or if you'd like to also support um, our co-host separately, we'll have all the payment links. That is completely up to you, but not required. Come and have fun. Bring your little cheese tray so we can look at it and, and decide what we would we would have picked at if we were right in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody eat some French fries for me because I'm not. You know, I'm trying not to eat carbs. I just want to watch you. I just want to eat watch you eat French fries. <laughs> Is that bad? Is that bad, sis? Yeah, no. <laughs> I gotta live vicariously through somebody who's eating carbs. <laughs> All right, so that's our event. Boom. I'm gonna eat the carbs. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> but yeah, definitely go check out all the things. Um, the shirts, the post of um the books that we suggested last podcast that we didn't get to, you know, go ahead. <laughs> we'd be busy. We'd be doing stuff. Sorry. We'd be busy. We apologize. And then, of course, the event for the 26th at 5 o'clock. Can we Pacific time. At 7? That's 5 o'clock Pacific time. It goes to 6.30. It's an hour and a half long. But if you are, in, depending on where you are, that's not 5 o'clock everybody's time. So if you're in the oh. East Coast, it's 8 o'clock. If you're in Houston, it's seven o'clock. Yes. Um, these things or at least if you're in Dallas, it's seven o'clock. Is Houston and Dallas the same time zone? Yes. I think so. I think so. All right. Don't give me the line just in case I lied. My bad. And, <laughs> and mountain time, it'll be six o'clock. So yeah. boom, 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 boom. Yeah. But it's an hour and a half. Made it a little bit later in the day. So you could put the babies in, either in bed or in front of the cartoons or whatever and come join us and have fun. Yes, because we're going to have some fun. We are. We so, are. it's on and popping. Or do, we yes. cleanse? do we need a cleanse? Do we need to open up? I did a little cleanse. You want to do a little more cleanse yourself? It's up to you. I'm good. I'm, I'm good. good. We are protected. We are in a container right now, so yeah. our listeners are already put that intention out there. Boom. Got my, my giant. Boom. Mm. Block it. We blocking the energy. Pow, pow, pow. Pow. All right. Pow. <laughs> So, of course, I have to do the infamous screen share because this is yes. astrology, so you, y'all know how we do. If you, right, you know, right. This is what we do. We share our screen when we're talking about uh, our killer astrology. So yes, give me one do. second. So y'all can follow along with the bouncing ball. Oh my goodness. Uh, for all y'all out there that prayed for me and sent intention that I get a new camera, thank you so much. <laughs> and for all y'all that wasn't going to tell me that that camera looked bad, you know, you just, you ain't right. Y'all ain't right for that. You could have told me. Y'all knew. No, but thank you. I know you'll probably just want to hurt my thumbs. It looked bad. It did. So I got a new camera, everybody. Yay. Yay. I can see me. Look at me. I'm clear. <laughs> You're very clear, sis. I mean, right. For like real. Clear, clear. Like, I think y'all might be able to see with the irises in my eyes right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm sorry, did I cut? I'm sorry. No. Oh, you're good. I was laughing because I was putting my eyeball up. Were you? Were you? Were you? <laughs> you missed <it. laughs> Sorry, we're cutting up today. We're no me. We, to, are. But okay. we are. Okay. So here is the chart of Mr. Jeff. Okay, all right. He's not all off of one side or the other like the other ones have been. Exactly. So that's why I, when I was telling you, and, and that's why I'm like, uh, I lied. Um, when I was telling you that um, surface level, that, you know what I'm saying, like he wasn't, his chart wasn't like um, Richard's or um, Ted's. Right. But, whoo, this right here. Lord have mercy. We're going to get into it. We're going to get into it. Because that's it. when I was like, when I saw all that, and that's a lot of personal planets, friend. Yeah. That's Look at a, all that, that and all the concentration in that one controlled area. Exactly. All in the eighth house. Right. And I know we 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 going to go back and forth, but just real quick, just to reiterate, you know, already his chart is showing his patterns of his life. On the surface, 
most people would say he didn't seem like he would be a violent person and he had any kind of tendencies like this at all on the surface on the surface it, it was very very confusing that this is the kind of guy and boy that he was but once you dug a little further found out how he really was just like his chart then it was like oh there's a lot of stuff that don't add up here this ain't this ain't right that ain't that ain't good <laughs> <laughs> So, because you know the eighth house, the eighth house is about um, transformation, right? Because this is mm -hmm. basically the, the the house that's ruled by um, Pluto and Scorpio. Okay. Okay. So this is all this all this eighth house energy is investments, um, intensity, um, contracts. It's about sex. It's about erotic capital. It's about secrets. It's about mysteries. It's about obsessions, um, inheritance. And I didn't even know this. This is it's also about kundalini energy. Interesting. Right? Stalking and the underworld. So all these things are deep below the surface level stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know? And then as you can see, the um the ruler. of the second house, right? Which is uh, uh, Scorpio. Pluto is in here and the 11th house, but we're gonna get into that. You know what I'm saying, in a minute. Okay. But the eighth house and the second house play with each other. You know what I'm saying? Because remember I was talking about this before with- Yes, um, the serving the houses. Yes. So the eighth house serves is um the second house because you know scorpio um rules the second house so all this eighth house energy is going to be in this second house does that make sense mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and also the 11th house but we'll get we'll, we'll we'll tap into that so what i see second whoo, house is family and foundation no second house is value value okay thank you so it's value, love, you know what I'm saying? The things that you, you know, about money, basically. This is your money house. Okay. To say the least. So we have, not only do we have the sun, Venus, and Mercury, but we have Pandora and Lucifer. Okay. So in this house, the sun um, actually is in uh, conjunction with Lucifer, meaning that they work together. Okay. Does that make sense? Mm hmm So the sun enhances this, um, this need for power, this need for immediate satisfaction, and anything that's in this eighth house. So all the things taboo, all the things, you know what I'm saying, mysterious, all those types of things, which makes sense. Got it. So Pandora and Lucifer and all of those are in the eighth house. Yes. Pandora, Mercury, Lucifer, the sun, and Venus. Oh, and is Venus. Okay. Thank you. I didn't even know that. Yes. Okay. So then we have, um, I also looked at some like conjunctions and oppositions. So I looked at, looked at some aspects, right? Mm -hmm. So, and I'm, I'm, I have to stay in this, this eighth house. Um, so the sun is opposing karma. So we talked about karma before, you know, yes, really with, especially with, with Ted. Yes. And it seems like, I think on the last two that karma was sitting in between either one, the first house and the second house for Ted and Richard. Richard, it was somewhere else, but for, for, for Ted, for sure. It was in the first house. It was like, we were like, wow, it was like, boom, right there. Like okay. Ted was the embodiment of karma, at least in, especially in his life, like what he felt like. He felt like he was the embodiment of karma. Right. So what is it, what, what's karma doing for, for, for Jeff? So for Jeff, the, everything that's taboo, everything that he was into, he was, it was his karma to bring all these aspects out into, out into the open. You know what I'm saying? Like nobody was going to think, you know what I'm saying, about these things. Like he was that one that's, that was destined to bring these sorts of like taboo, not so pretty things to light. Mm, okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. 
So it's like he had to get caught. He had to do all the things that he was, you know what I'm saying, meant to do in order to bring all this to light. Yeah, and that there are look, people like this in the world that actually right. do this. And we'll talk about what I have on that too. Cause because similar to both Ted and Richard, there were those like things that could have stopped him from going on his path. And then it was like inevitable he was right. gonna fulfill this path, it was gonna happen anyway. Right. Um, okay, so, so the sun conjuncts the moon and Venus. So when this happens with the sun and it conjuncts both the moon and Venus, so you have a charming factor here. Um, you have an um, egocentric factor. You have very stubborn, still love of life, you know what I'm saying, but also forceful thinking. So he was very easy to attract support from other people. <clears throat> and, and this also can indicate um, difficulties in childhood, especially his father. Hmm. Now, you have anything that goes with everything that I just said? So well, far? okay. So <laughs> he wasn't he wasn't egotistical like Ted. He didn't have that like narcissism factor. He had some, obviously, because he felt like it was okay enough to be like, "Oh, people are here for my pleasure." Mm -hmm. not to the same like god complex right that, like ted had um and not to the whole same of like victimhood like ted had where like oh this is all happening to me and i'm the victim here kind of thing you know what i mean mm -hmm. like he felt like like he was wrong like things that he did were bad and he didn't like them about himself he didn't like himself a lot as a matter of fact he was at war with himself a lot but he he had a hard time with jobs, he had a hard time with grades, he had a hard time, and he did always have someone kind of helping him out, especially his father. Like, he was an alcoholic, and it was like, okay, well, we're gonna, we're gonna, like, give you some time to find a job. We're gonna give you some time. We really think you shouldn't do um, what you're doing with alcohol, and, like, you're just kind of sabotaging your life, but they didn't, like, really, really, truly put their foot down, and for two whole years, he lived with his grandmother, Mm -hmm. which, who was the only person that that um that he had affection for and for two whole years um when he lost his job that he had at her house he he was just um she just gave him money he got to live for two whole years she just she just paid for his life and he, that made him have more time on his hands to be able at that time he wasn't killing but he was exposing himself and so on and so forth so um so that part the case so that part is the easy to attract support what you said about the easy to attract support he right. was able to have a, the family and people like just be like oh i i'll help you out or i'll we'll give you another chance or we'll give you extra time or I'll, or the grandmother just gave him money for two years you know things like that um he was good at at having that so it didn't like make him as responsible as he could have been okay because he had like a lot of enablers um mm -hmm. in his life um, the difficulty in his childhood, you said, especially from father, he did have a lot of difficulties in his childhood, but it appears that the majority, like usual, the majority of the difficulties were with his mother, but it depends on how you look at it. So with his father, his father wasn't there. His father was, mo was a workaholic. His father was married. He fought him out. His mother and father fought in front of him a lot growing up. Mm -hmm. um, but the father, I think this way of handling the tension with the mother, the mother had a lot of mental illnesses. She had depression. She has, she was a hypochondriac. She was always manipulative and vying for affection, for attention. She would uh, have anxiety over the smallest things so that she would get attention and pity. She liked that kind of attention too, even if it was pity. Mm -hmm. um, but the father, I think his way of handling that was just to just work and just stay busy at the lab at the university and just stay gone all the time. So in that way, he did have a lot of difficulty from his father. But as far as like, he was more accepted by his father. His father like this, saw his curiosities as like scientific, like, oh, you want to look at bones? You want to look at animals? Let's do that together. Like he supported him and didn't treat him like he was like too weird. Um, so, um, so in that way, he kind of, he kind of didn't have a, a difficulty with his father, but, but his, the father left him alone, you know, with his crazy mom a lot. So 
in that other way, he did have difficulties with his father. Okay. Oh, okay. So I see, um, because you know, usually for me, 10th house is uh, father energy. Uh And the 10th house is ruled by Saturn. So sometimes the Saturn can represent that father figure. So he has a, um, an aspect with Saturn that I see with Pandora. So this is more of a, um, um, yeah. Oh, okay. So this is more like a a semi square, um, aspect. Um, Uh so with this, that means this, like with his father, like, just like you said, he was, you know, he can put the, his father helped him put the pieces of the puzzle together as far as his curiosity goes because Pandora mm-hmm. is about that curiosity. Oh, you know? yes, yes. His dad did open up Pandora's box. Yes, he, exactly. He cleaned bones and bleached bones in front of him and he, you know, told him about acid and stuff to like melt the, get the skin off of bones. Like, like, sick stuff that we wouldn't normally talk about his dad was just like oh well, that's just science so yes yes very yes yeah, yeah yeah okay so yeah that's where that plays into so his you know pandora is in um semi square with um saturn saturn yes got it got it got it that, that brings in that aspect of his father opening up that pandora's box for him mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. putting the pieces together so it's like um you know what i'm saying like that's where uh yes it's mixed educates transform you know what i'm saying yes. mixed curious so that's yes. it's in my yes. um yes square aspect yeah. now the movie that one that recently came out with uh my friend Dahmer is uh, a a uh, graphic novel written by somebody that went to high school with Dahmer I don't know how much of that the the kid himself that wrote the book um experienced Mm -hmm. or how much of it he just embellished for to make the novel because it's a graphic novel um in the movie they they had the father acting um like he was the one who did difficult he was the one telling him you need to make friends you need to be normal you need to stop being weird quit being a freak but the other things that I um, you know, studied outside of just the movies and stuff, um, the actual studies, I didn't find anywhere that it actually um, supported that that's how the father was. But let's say the friend did see that, mm-hmm. um, that kind of relationship, then definitely there would also be the aspect of his father, you know, giving him that difficulty of like, you need to be normal. And he just, he just did not know how. Right. Okay. So that's where, cause I was about to ask you, how does his friend's in his life you know i'm saying how did his friends play a role like was he in a way he was a loner but yet there was a big very big importance when it comes to his friends does that make sense yes yeah it makes perfect sense and that that is like how he was like that he was he learned how to become a class clown because he realized that making friends laugh and stuff made people want to hang out with him more. Okay. But then he would then he would show them the things he was doing. Like, I'm gonna clean these bones and I'm gonna get this roadkill and I'm gonna and sometimes they would like, you know, kind of um um, you know, encourage that, like just like, you know, indulge this a little bit. And sometimes they'd be like, You're such a freak, you're so weird, what's wrong with you? You know? Um right. so so yeah, yeah, absolutely. It also plays later on because of the fact that he, he was gay, it also plays later on into um I think some of this Venus aspect that you're gonna talk about and also love being in conjunction, you know, with these things because of the sun, I mean, in conjunction because love played a big, big role in his in his life and his killings and everything. I think he was looking for love from people, from friendships and from his victims. Um, You know what I mean? Like his sick, twisted, warped way of looking at love really affected this. Okay. So the reason why I said that, because you know how the houses can play off each other, right? Yes. Yes. The fifth and 11th house, especially those opposite houses. So they're, they really play a lot in his chart because you have over here, um, you know, we, we like our cousin, Ron Ron. He yeah. over here in his fifth house in Pisces. And then you have Sado. Sado, Sado. that's what I was supposed to say. I see Sado. Uh-oh, there goes Sado. I was wondering yeah. where he was going to be at. Exactly. And that's in Pisces. You know what I'm saying? So I also feel that there is, when it comes to this Sadoism or, you know what I'm saying, sadistic side of him, that did he possibly, like, did drugs? 
especially when he was doing these um, types of, you know, he was an apple. alcoholic. He had to drink. He had to drink to kill. That was something I wrote down. I was going to bring it up. So there you go. Okay, go on. He called it his medicine. Okay. See, mm-hmm. that's, and that's exactly what I see. And then, you know, we know how Ron Ron does. So, you know, that's the wounded healer. So right. that also plays in his healing from any type of, you know what I'm saying, drug addiction too. But we also have to realize that, you know what I'm saying, Pisces is not just that. As it, this is also a fantasy for him. So this fantasy, you know what I'm saying, is it, it plays out and it's fun for him because this is in his fifth house of fun and creativity. So this is not just, you know what I'm saying, this is definitely like something that he takes pleasure in mm-hmm. in that fifth house. So then mm-hmm. you have um, Pluto, right, and his 11th house. So this is your our house of friends, basically. Mm-hmm. And so, okay. you know, that Pluto is also playing a role in the second house. So he's definitely going to value friends, you know what mm-hmm. I'm saying, with that those two playing off each other. He's going to value friends. He's going to probably even try to make money with friends. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm, in a way. Mm-hmm. Like that could have possibly um, been something that he tried to do with friends or just to make friends. Like definitely make friends at work. Yeah. Say yeah. That. Yeah. You know but I, they had like a lot of um, little practical jokes and stuff. They had like, you know, um, they, were, they got him snuck into some pictures into some group that he belonged in. Um, in high school that he didn't actually belong like you know like say so he showed up <laughs> that day for the, the the picture of like the like say he was the astronomy club or the you know what i mean and they just, they thought it was funny and so he they kind of thought of it was like a way to um gain uh no- notoriety they were going to use Dahmer to like become like notorious for doing these pranks um so that was a kind of a, a kind of currency that they were receiving, right? Like the yeah. the popularity and the attention that they were going to receive by using Dahmer's face to be really funny and put his serious face in this picture with these smiling faces on the honor roll or whatever. You know what I mean? Like they thought it was hilarious. Right. Okay. Okay. So that mm-hmm. makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you have the, his true his true um, North Node. Uh huh. That's in Virgo. And that's in his 11th house. So we know about, you know, that um, North Node, South Node, you know, the North Node is about what you're supposed to master in this, this life. Yeah. His mastering in this life, especially with this aspect being in this house is definitely like being practical when it comes to friendships and these types of um, energy in the 11th house. Right. Well, he failed that. Right. (laughs) He definitely. Word, that's why you're supposed to master it. You don't right. always master it. Right, right. <laughs> in, in this in this lifetime, so yeah, like he um he had to take a practical po- approach when it comes to friendships and community and you know what I'm saying discovering things and. Right. A Pluto is also like one of the ones that makes stuff weird, right? Because it's oh, like yeah. also like, because it's not like, it's like, oh, are you a planet? Are you not a planet? It's the stuff, it's, it makes stuff weird. <laughs> yeah. So that being in his like, in his like house of friendships, friendships meant that like, this is kind of weird. Like his, he yeah. was, it was awkward. His friendships yeah. were awkward. Yeah. Very that. Awkward. Yes. That makes a lot of sense. Okay. Yeah. Um, what else do I see off the top? So I really want to touch base. I know that you um, you stay like with his grandmother and stuff. Like he stayed with his grandmother for a while. Yes, I wanted to see if that ended up being anywhere in his chart because she was literally the only person that he gave affection to in the entire family. Okay, so do you had was there any type of incest? Oh, I don't know. Okay, because we have um, basically. Um, <clears throat> Murra, you know what I'm saying? It's like Mur and or Murha, yeah. and his um sixth house, and this is about you know what I'm saying like sexual abuse, but in the form of either bestiality or incest. Mm. You know what I'm okay. saying? And it's, now what's the sixth house? The sixth house. This is about routine. This is about service. Oh, okay. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And then mm-hmm. it's so um close to the moon. I was just wondering, you know what I'm saying? Because it does so, have some type of aspect with the moon. 
this is not a fact. This would just be a theory. Okay. But here's the theory. So, so A, I mean, that his routine with him picking out these boys and his men that he liked. And, and so, you know, there's that form of that, that taboo. Um, bestiality might have come up because he's a cannibal. Like, because he, oh. because it became very beast-like. It became very animal-like with these, um, with these victims. The things that he did with them was very, like, and it started with animals. He wanted, he cut the animals up the way that he cut the, the them up so he had sex with their but with their organs right it's not unlikely that he had sex with the organs of the animals that he was doing that to when he was younger and that would have been the bestiality part right um if there was any again this is just this is not fact this is again this is just my theory if there was any incest that was involved my guess would it would have been between him and his younger brother who has changed his name and lives in anonymity, anonymity, anonymously, he lives anonymously, you know, he uh -huh. completely changed his name so nobody can find him. So we don't know anything about the brother at all, but he had a little brother um, and he wanted, and when he, a couple of times he didn't actually kill, he just got caught doing things. He was molesting like 13 year old boys. They were like young. Oh, wow. So that might've been something that he could have possibly started with his, um, little brother. So if there was incest, that would have been my guess. It was where that would have been. But I'm thinking the bestiality from Murr is probably what we're looking at here because, okay. like I said. Well, that makes perfect sense to, because it says like, um, yeah, not even just bestiality, just just different. Like it's yeah. not the same as, you know what I'm saying, regular like abuse or sexual abuse. You know what I'm right. saying? It's just really different. Like um sexual relationships that go against natural law law so yeah, that, there you go. that makes different, perfect sense there you know you what i'm saying because this is also the house of health too you know what i'm saying the sixth house mm. so that again that might be why he was very very interested in the anatomy and mm -hmm. the body and what makes the body work and their bones stuff like because that still has something to do with health yes he also was very attracted to what he called like physically beauty beautiful bodies he knew, he liked an attractively um, a healthy looking body he needed them to be in good shape he oh. liked to eat their bicep muscle even oh mm -hmm. wow yeah yeah so that played a big part and i see that in because he has venus in in taurus his venus is in taurus and that's uh -huh. in the eighth house so that makes perfect sense you know what i'm saying that that's what he would enjoy you know what i'm saying because this is your house of sex as as well and attraction Mm -hmm. so this is what he's going to be you know what i'm saying sexually attracted to especially with venus sitting there in his his eighth house with taurus right nothing but somebody that's sexually you know what i'm saying attractive or wanting someone you know what I'm yes saying, to be yeah you know as a matter of fact one of his victims he drugged them and once he was passed out he looked at them and realized that he thought they were ugly he wasn't attracted to them and so he could have let them go but then he thought if i once he wakes up he's going to be mad that i drugged them so right. I might as well go ahead and kill him. He killed him, but he didn't eat any of the body parts and he didn't save any of the body parts like he normally does the rest of them. Because to him, it was like, he was like revulsed by it. It was like, oh, you're ugly. I don't, I don't need to keep any of you around. I'll just dispose of this body. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. So yeah, so I wanted to, I wrote that down too, that looks was like a big thing for him. Um, there was that important that for that one guy, he could have, he could have just like been saved because of the fact that he was ugly, but then he felt, but then Jeffrey thought, well, he's going to be mad. So I might as well just go ahead and kill him. Okay. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. I see you. Okay. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so especially, like I said, especially with Venus in Taurus, mm -hmm. in its own planet, um, or ruled by, you know what I'm saying? Its own planet is definitely going to have that, that aspect. Um, right. Let me see what it conjuncts or has a, um, anything with. The Venus is in conjunct with uh, the sun. Um, so anything it, else? Yes. It's also squaring Uranus and it's making a trine with Saturn. So that means that he's going to find a lot of people that he either calls friends, very attractive, mm. 
You know what I'm saying? Like he's he's gonna play off of that type of of uh, energy. Okay, well, or, or so the uh, the opposite, like like maybe it happened out of order. Hold on. He found them attractive, and then he would keep them. You know, be, to make them his friends. He talked to them. Okay. He kept them. He kept them like he kept them whole. Sometimes in his bed for as long as he could before the body started decomposing. He'd keep them for a couple of days. This was like his family. This was like his lovers. This was like his roommates. These were his friends. And then after a couple of days had passed, then he would break the body down because he had to. But he'd keep their skulls. He'd keep their hands. Souvenirs. Souvenirs. Yes. Yes. But not just for souvenir purposes. For the purpose of like making them like his surroundings. Making them his friends and family and keeping them with him. He was very, very lonely. And like I said, so lo that love, that love aspect playing a big part in his life and, in, and even in his killing. Um, he wanted love and he wanted, he wanted love his way though. So that stubbornness that you mentioned earlier, he's very mm -hmm. stubborn, very, not practical at all, not thinking about, so I, the egotistic about like, but you're supposed to do things my way. It's not okay for you to want to come and go as you please. I, I wanted you here and I don't want you to ever, ever leave. So I'm going to kill you and keep you here. Or I want to have, you know, sexual interactions with you, but I don't want you to have needs. I want you to only fulfill the sex needs that I want. So I'm going to drug you and have sex with you while you're unconscious. Okay. Wow. Yeah. So that's where that, um. Also, he, oh, and he also, he, he frequented the gay bars and he said to him, it felt like it was calming to him. It was like a, like going to the chapel, just sitting at the gay bar, just being amongst all of these beautiful people. So there's another aspect of like being attracted to his friends, mm -hmm. like being surrounded by these beautiful gay men that was like in his mind, his friends. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Wow. So like, did he change jobs a lot? Yeah. Okay. I think that he even did so trying to keep himself from killing because he, he worked at a delicatessen he worked as a plasma, a, a, you know, a phlebotomist as a, at a blood center, the plasma. I think he was trying to get close to his, his satisfying his needs without actually having to kill, but he would switch jobs. So um, one time as a chocolatier. Oh, really? He also went into the military. Wow. Okay. And he was a combat, combat medic. Seriously? Yeah. The same thing I was when I went into the military? Seriously? <laughs> of course. <laughs> so that the reason why I say that is because he has Uranus in his tenth house in Leo. So to me, that's somebody that changes jobs a lot because mm -hmm. Uranus is not is rare is very rebellious energy. So yes. they're going to stick with something. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. ah, mm -hmm. No, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. It, right. It doesn't match with my vibration. Let me go and go somewhere else. Right. Right. Because the Uranus um, energy is that energy that makes you want to do things like against the grain yes. and uh, like find non-traditional yes. ways. You got it, sis. You've, right. been here. You've been here a while. Yeah. You've been here. <laughs> so I want to also touch on uh, narcissists. Over yes. Here. Okay. So this is in his third house. So this mm -hmm. is very interesting to me. So did he like feel that um because you know if you know the story about narcissists he you know what i'm saying fell yes. in love with his own uh, reflection reflection and right. so therefore that's you know what i'm saying where he's at and that's how right. he basically comes to his demise right because you know because of the curse because what he did to echo it's a whole thing yes so, <laughs> <laughs> so this is like more of a self indulged thing Right. So and for him, this to be in his house of communication, he's going to think that he is dominant and only his voice matters. Only his the way he thinks matters. You know, what I'm saying because that's very narcissistic, you know, what I'm saying to way of thinking, you know, what I'm saying, especially if you feel that, OK, yeah, no, like you're I'm more dominant when it comes to communication. I'm more dominant when it comes to thinking.